I've just fitted and tested this Anycubic Ultra Base to my Cocoon Create Touch, but the question is, is it any good? Since I received my Mark III, I decided to turn this Cocoon Create Touch into a dedicated flexible materials machine. Previously I added the Flexion Extruder as well as some small things like thumb wheels with nylock nuts that don't vibrate out of place. Now in the previous episode I reverse engineered an STL of Thingiverse to make my own custom Z-axis adjustment system and I'm going to need it today because our next mod is an Anycubic Ultra Base. Let's have a look inside. Okay, so this is basically a big piece of tempered glass. On one side, it has a peel off sheet of adhesive. And on the other side, it has this really fine coating. That's on the surface of the glass and that negates the use of hairspray, which is how I printed for years on my old Solid Doodle 2. My understanding of the theory behind this is that when it's hot, the plastic sticks to the microscopic texture, but as it cools down, the glass cools at a different rate to the plastic and the two will naturally shift apart. When everything completely cools down, we should be able to just pick up the object without it sticking at all. Now to add something this thick to the bed, you're really gonna need to do the mod that I covered in the last episode. So what I've done is wind in my adjustment screw on my mod a fair way down. That hits the end stop sooner, which means it's higher above the bed, creating the room for this. Now you might be wondering why I changed the bed on this because out of the box it does work pretty well. Well, there's one main reason and that's wear and tear. If we look closely on this one here, we can see that there's a bit already lifting up and there's a lot of old bits of plastic that remain stuck to the top. For me, I like eliminating the idea of consumables as much as possible. So if I can switch to this glass top and it never needs replacing unless I accidentally smash it, for me, that's a good thing rather than buying sticker sheets that need replacing periodically. Now this is designed to just peel off the sticker base and put on top of the old one after you've picked off the existing sticker sheet, but we do have a problem. If we look up close, we'll see that the adjustment screws for the top of each corner sit up too high. That means when we try to put our bed into place, it clashes. So unless we wanna sit it proud, which means when we try to stick it down, it's probably gonna crack, we're gonna run into trouble. The quick and dirty way is to just rotate everything a couple of degrees to the side and then use clips but that's not really utilizing the full size of the bed and that's not really gonna do it for me. So here's the solution. In here, I have some new M3 nuts. Instead of having a cap head like the old ones, they have a flat head and that means that they're countersunk on the inside. So we should be able to remove these ones, but then we'll need to do one tiny little bit of drilling and then everything should sit flush on top and we're ready to stick on our bed and get started. So we're gonna start by removing the old M3 screws from each corner. Got our old ones out and our bed is loose and there's something in there we need to make sure we definitely retain and that is these little fibrous washers. I believe they originally came out without them in an early iteration of the printer and then they did a safety recall and they added them in and it's very crucial that you put them in to prevent the circuit accidentally grounding and potentially making a fire. I don't know about you but my lock nuts on the underside aren't looking so hot anymore so I would recommend using some nice new ones. But before we can reinstall, we've got one slight problem and that's the countersunk bottom of this. To fix that, we're gonna need our drill and a countersinking bit. We're gonna drill into the top of the surface to put in that same 45 degree angle and we're gonna drill it just as deep as we need to until the bolts sit flush. So after you've done your drilling, you might find you've got some tiny little tidbits on the top surface. I've got a very sacrificial and ever suffering old chisel that I'm gonna to use to scrape these flat. And then after that, we might peel off the existing cover and get ready to put on the new one. Now the hot tip for getting this off is to use a scraper and to do it warm to help the glue dissolve a little bit. After that, there is gonna be some residue left behind. So we're gonna use some acetone to clean it up. easy, I have no idea what people complain about.
only bit that needed cleaning was the bit where I started peeling without heating it up. And that was PLA temperature for reference, which is 60 degrees Celsius. But the top is now completely clean. It's time to reassemble my new nuts, making sure I do the lock nuts really tight on the underside, including the fibrous washer and then the spring after that. So I've just finished reassembling everything and I've given the top a wipe with IPA just to help the adhesive on this one stick as well as possible. So let's peel off the yellow sticker and get this in place. Excellent, let's turn it on and level the bed. Time to start the level wizard. It has its own piece of paper that it recommends to use. It's maybe a tiny little bit thicker in the GSM compared to normal office paper. So I'll start with this and we'll go from there. The bed is level and we're ready for our first print. Now that was frustrating. It took me five goes to get it to work and the early ones looked promising but then kept on peeling off and off and off. Now the model was chosen specifically because it's meant to be a bit of a torture test for the first layer. It's got lots of little bits and if the extruder's going back and forth between them and the edge peels up and it catches it, it's gonna dislodge it. So it seems ideal for me. It's also not too big, therefore it won't take too long to print and too long to test. I got on Google and I tried some things in between each prints. The main ones being slowing down the first layer speed, which makes sense. Now the main problem I have to say was the leveling. This piece of paper put the nozzle way too high above the bed. On that final one, I twisted my screw counterclockwise, which lifts it up, which lets it get lower before it hits the homing switch, putting it closer to the bed. And I finally had a successful print. Now this thing advertises that when it cools down, it should pop off without pretty much any effort at all. And it's been completely cool. I've been editing the video up to this point and it's cold to touch, so let's see how it goes. Okay, we have a fail, at least partially in the fact that I'm gonna need to use a spatula. Not really happy about all of this being left behind. This is the exact thing I was trying to avoid by getting this. Now I have to say this is the worst print I've done on this printer for a while. I seem to have some sort of under extrusion, not that I can really blame that on the bed. It's got a lot of separation between the layers. It sounds flimsy, sounds like it wants to fall apart. But the only good news is it did actually print properly in terms of its articulation. Prints in one piece with gaps in between and then you pull it off and it snapped into life instantly, which is a good thing. Time to test with PLA. Now the first time around I chose ABS because it was hard. I chose a print that was meant to be hard to give this thing a challenge and it did that. This time I wanted to do an ordinary cube in PLA just to see if it works as advertised. It did stick and print first go but here comes one of the downsides of this system. I have to wait for it to cool before I try and remove it. For someone like me that's pretty impatient with this type of thing, that's hard to do. Well, it's finally cool to touch, so let's try it out. It should just lift off without any particular effort. And once again, it is stuck. I'm gonna to need to go for my scraper. 
and it did come off, it wasn't too bad, not as hard as a regular print. Now I will note there's a little bit of the red ABS still on there, so perhaps it was stuck to that. Hard to tell. Time to give a summary, and yes, I know these are only a couple of prints and it's not enough for a complete review. So this is more of a first impression. Let's go over the pros and cons. The pros are it's somewhat affordable. I think this one was about $40 from eBay. In terms of mods, if you can get it to work nicely, then it's not too bad in terms of bang for your buck. Now the changing of the bolts and drilling to get them flush, that's not the fault of this bed here. That would have to happen for any aftermarket bed that I put on top, unless it had little corners cut out to avoid these screws. So how about the cons? Well, firstly and foremost, it doesn't really seem to work as advertised. It's meant to grip things when it's hot and they're meant to come off without really much effort when they cool down. The gripping when it's hot, well, that was pretty hard to achieve. Maybe I'm pretty close to getting it dialed in. The coming off after it's cooled, again, not quite there. One other significant downside is how much longer it takes to preheat before you do your printing. It's a big, heavy piece of glass, which adds a lot of thermal mass. So basically you've got the same amount of heating power for a lot more mass, it's gonna take longer to heat up. And of course that means it's gonna take longer to cool down, which you have to do with this system because you're not meant to hack at it with your scraper. My initial impressions are it's a little bit underwhelming, but you know what, the real test is to come. This is a dedicated flexible material machine. So what I really need to do is to test it with that. So rest assured, I will do a follow-up video on this base. In terms of this video, I think there were still some useful things in there in terms of prepping your machine for aftermarket beds. In the next installment of modifying this Cocoon Create Touch, we're gonna to flash some custom firmware and that's something a lot of people are afraid to do. So I'm gonna take you through each step of the way. So until then, thanks for watching. Stay tuned and happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.